This is episode 70. I am so happy that you're here and thank you for joining my show, your coach, Helen Yuskovic. I am on a worldwide mission to help people get confident in putting themselves first because I used to put myself second my whole life. And because of that, I experienced every unhealthy relationship possible. An unhealthy relationship with myself, my health, my wealth, my intimate relationships, my family, my friends, and my career. I'm now living in an abundance that I used to just dream about. So I want to pave the way for you too. It's time, guys. It's time that you live in the life of your dreams as well. So let's take a step towards that right now. P.S. Subscribe to my podcast on your app now so that you always tune in to my new episodes. Hi guys, today's episode is a little bit different where I allow Connor from the podcast Comeback, the Comeback Beats the Setback interview me today. I will be sharing a lot of things about my gratitude practice, positive affirmations and manifestation in order to live your best life and also a little bit about my clients and the things that I do as well as a little snippet of my time meeting David Goggins. So I hope you enjoy, kick back, relax and enjoy the show. Welcome. My guest today is Helen Uskovic. She is initially from Australia, having parents from Croatia and Greece. And we're going to talk about the work and the coaching she does today. Helen, welcome to come back. How are you? <laughs> Thank you. I'm so well. I'm loving the sunny weather that we're having here in Sydney today. How are you doing? Uh, yeah, not too bad. I'm keeping myself as busy as possible in this 24-7 draconian curfew that Ho Chi Minh Vietnam have implemented. So I'm just doing the best, ticking over day by day. Insane. And we've got to laugh, otherwise we'll go crazy and just got to remember that you know we are all experiencing the same thing right now and if we can you know spread a little bit more love and positivity towards each other uh, we can get through this a whole lot easier yeah absolutely do you have any practices that are keeping you on track during this lockdown period any yoga meditation any rituals you have Connor I am like the self-care queen so my rituals are off the chain so from the get-go from when I wake up I make sure that I do stuff for myself all day so I do have rituals I meditate I read I have a gratitude practice I make sure that I exercise I also um, am a personal trainer so I run fitness classes every single morning and I'm a yoga instructor and I run yoga as well. So I make sure that I'm constantly doing things. We are lucky in that we are able to get out of our house to go and visit massage therapists, chiropractors, doctors and physios. So each week I do get a massage as well. So I'm constantly looking after myself. Yeah, I was going to say, is there anything you don't do? When you just mentioned that list, I thought, like, wow, okay, you're certainly keeping on board. <laughs> we have to, yeah, because I found, you know, in life, the minute I start to neglect myself, my energy starts to dip. And so I, I really started getting strict with this a few years ago. And, you know, back in the day, I used to smoke cigarettes. And I sat there one day and I thought, why am I paying for a death investment? when I can use this money for a health investment. So what I did was I swapped buying cigarettes and I changed that to getting a massage. It was a whole different way of thinking on how to better my life and how to better myself. Nice, yeah, I like that actually, the idea of this is a death investment. That's deep, but it goes to a core point, right? You can be investing yeah. money elsewhere. 100% and then it makes use of your money better and you feel so much better. like it's the feeling after a massage is way better than the feeling after a cigarette. <laughs> yeah, precisely. I try to do reasonably similar where I eat a lot 
cleaner and healthier foods nowadays than I used to. And agreed, okay, I would argue that a meat-based dish does taste a bit better than this vegan meal that I have in front of me now, but the feeling that I have after is so much better. So I'm sacrificing a little bit of taste for a lot more pleasure and beneficial feelings after I've eaten the meal, if that makes sense. Everything's a sacrifice and a compromise. Well, you feel lighter and when you don't have, you know, something hard to digest like meat, um, your digestive system doesn't have to work as hard. So your energy is used for different things like focus and clarity and productivity instead of wasting its time trying to like digest this meat that is stuck inside your organs somewhere. So yeah. Do you yeah, have really do you have a vegan practice or you, what's your diet like? No, so um my mum is Greek, so <laughs> we were like born eating lamb. Um so we I follow like a Mediterranean sort of a diet. I incorporate a lot of meat free days. Um, I also find the benefits of having meat free dishes. I wouldn't say I am anything. I just eat how my body tells me to. I can tell if I'm low in iron, for example. And once a month or so, I know that I need to have a steak. And I have experimented Connor with so many diets just because I'm that type of person and when I followed a vegan diet it didn't serve me well I I got really skinny <laughs> and I started you know just lacking things and I was getting very weak and very dizzy and no matter how much I was fueling myself on all these beautiful plants I just wasn't feeling right my nails started changing color I just I had to hold on to things and I just ate a piece of steak and I thought, let me just have some steak. And it was just like night and day. And I was like, interesting. My body likes to have some meat. But having said that, I love my plant days. So then I realized, you know what? It's more of a Mediterranean style diet that works for me. And everyone is so different. All, all I say to my clients is do what makes you feel well. That is a simple but powerful message. Do what you feel suits you well, not being influenced by others. It's just a soul practice. of the Yeah, and experiment with them all. Like I love <laughs> experiment. I've experimented with a keto diet a paleo diet, a vegan diet, um, a meat-based diet. And, you know, it's really good to actually see how you feel with the way different diets are. It's just a fun experiment. And, you know, while you're in lockdown, why not try them out now? Yeah, exactly. That's a really good way of <laughs> keeping active throughout lockdown. I also think yeah. with other rituals such as the huge pile of books that I had on my bookshelf that otherwise I wouldn't have got round to. But with all of this free time, I just plowed through every single one, just made the most out wow. of it. Wow. That's so good. That's amazing. Yeah, for real. I like doing little challenges like that during lockdown. So, yeah, I'm a pretty proactive person. So I make sure that, you know, all my clients are doing something each week with me whether it's a challenge of some sort or an activity or a pop-up something or other like you know yesterday I put up a post and I said um surprise today you have to complete 6,000 steps today and you have to do that by 6 p.m you know and just like, surprising people and giving people something to do like reading a book you know that's a good one maybe I'll tell them they have to read a few chapters today of a book yeah so with that, what sort of work is it that you do, Helen? How would you describe the work you do? I do a lot of things, but the, the main thing that I like doing is helping people to live a better life and to fulfill their dreams and their goals, whatever it is. So I'm a coach now. I've had a multitude of careers, <laughs> but right now I am in the field of health and wellness and mindset coaching. I'm an author of a book. 
I also have a podcast um, that I work through as well. And I think I did mention before that I was a personal trainer. So now during lockdown, I, you know, have got that going as well every morning. One, because it helps my clients stay active, healthy, and their mind focused. But two, it keeps me accountable <laughs> as well. So I have to exercise with my clients in the morning as well. But yes, before coaching, it was a whole different story. I was definitely not living healthily as I am now. So that's why I suppose I'm passionate because I know that people can change mm. and I understand when people uh, find it hard to change and how important it is to have a non-judgmental support person slash cheerleader in your corner. So that's what I love to be for people. Yeah, of course. And with that, do you mind telling me more about that period of your life where you weren't at your healthiest and you weren't at your sharpest? Can you tell me a bit more about that stage? <laughs> so in my 20s, I worked in the music and entertainment industry as a rapper, MC, a DJ, a actress, and I did some modeling. And, you know, the entertainment industry is just full of sex, drugs and rock and roll. And so it was a very fast decade, but one that I have amazing memories from. But with that comes you know, a whole different circle of friends and peers and just the industry altogether. So there was lots of toxic behaviours that go on in the music industry. And so, you know, I was even drinking Red Bull and V, like energy drinks for breakfast. I remember that as well. <laughs> and smoking and it was insane. You know, when I'd go tour around Australia, you have a rider and, you know, my rider was alcohol and Red Bull. And, you know, when you're at a show and performing, you just drink it all. And so <laughs> it was just like a big party lifestyle of no nutrition. You know, the nutrition was terrible. It was always fast foods. Exercise was definitely not consistent and it wasn't even a priority, to be honest. And during that time as well, that's when I sustained a bunch of injuries. My first injury, you know, was quite debilitating and it was a lower back injury where I fell really hard on my tailbone and I couldn't really uh, walk. And that pain stayed with me for a few years to the point where the doctors were like, you're going to be in pain for the rest of your life and you'll probably need surgery. And I said, no, I'm not going to have surgery and no, I'm not going to be in pain. And so that's when I started working on myself and I discovered something called uh, Bikram yoga because I thought, Connor, if paralyzed people can learn to walk again, I'm not paralyzed. I'm in pain. I can definitely get out of this pain. Mm. And then so I just did everything that I could to get out of that. And then, you know, there was the, the rollover with that where I realized, hold on, my whole life is needs, needs a big overhaul. My friends need an overhaul. My relationship is toxic. My body is complaining. I'm not feeling well. You know, I'm insecure because... When you audition a lot with acting, you know, you get rejected a lot. So, and in um, the music industry, you get hated on a lot. You get compared to a lot. And I was only one of two female MCs here in Australia. So it was very hard as well because females back in my day, <laughs> they didn't get taken too seriously. Mm. It's all changed now, hallelujah. So there's lots of female DJs around nowadays, which is brilliant. But, yeah, it was definitely a really eye-opening era, my whole music industry life and acting life. But afterwards I realised I don't, I'm not finding happiness here anymore. And that's when I started going 
in towards the direction of health. And then my whole life just started changing again to the point where all of those things started falling away. My injuries, my body became pain-free. I started feeling well. My energy came back, super confident, so much success in life, a beautiful circle of friendships. So anyone that is struggling and listening, it's so important to go through that. And you just got to remember that <laughs> is always happening for you and it's not happening to you. That's a good motto. And with that, you mentioned the back injury that you sustained and your refusal to allow it to define you. Do you think you used some kind of manifestation practice throughout that to make sure that it didn't affect you and it helped you yeah. take the correct path? 100% Connor so there that was the first big one and the second big one was again a, a big fall on my hip a few years later and then my third health injury was when I lost my eyesight and that was basically due to stress and so losing a sense was a really big eye-opener and you mentioned manifestation so the only things that replay in my brain whenever I am suffering, uh, especially physically, is positive affirmations. So when I couldn't see and I thought that, oh, my gosh, I can't read a book anymore, I can't drive, uh, I would meditate every day with the mantra I can see clearly with both eyes. I can see clearly with both eyes. And I did the same thing with my back. You know, I will be pain free. I will be free of pain. And I always make sure that I do the things that I need to do to get out of suffering. And I'm very proactive with that because I realize, you know, it's all up to me. No one's going to save me. <laughs> no one's going to do it for me. And every time I've had an injury or pain, and this is the same with my clients, I found that it is a direct link to some sort of emotional pain that I'm going through at that time as well. And it's really important, you know, when you're going through any sort of physical pain or physical suffering to and just go inwards and see, am I actually living life on my terms right now? Is there something that I'm not seeing clearly and is there something that I need to change yeah. and yeah that's how I got out of everything I'm so pain-free I can see with both eyes everybody I am fully <laughs> visual now and I'm so thankful for my eyesight I'm so thankful for my spine yeah and I still today work towards full health every single day and with that, do you mind telling me more? How did you lose your eyesight through stress? I'm genuinely curious. What was the whole process like? It was such a scary time, Connor. I, at that time, I was having a bit of a transition with my career. And I thought that I was going to take it one way. And so I was going on this path of this personal training career and at that time as well I my sister-in-law she was getting married and I was the maid of honor having you know to organize a few things I at that point also started a new business with a friend so I was trying to work on that and at that point as well I had some relatives here from the USA which I had to show around and I was also running my personal training business and working you know, 40 to 50 hours a week. And it was just a lot. And sometimes what happens is when you work yourself to the ground, you don't realize. And I remember driving to work one day and I had a sip of coffee. <laughs> and as I drank that coffee, I felt a huge zap go up from the back of my eye up to like my brain. And I thought, whoa, what was that? And it just started like that, Connor. It felt like there was something in my eye. And every time I kept trying to wipe it away, it would not go away. And then every day that I woke up, I was waking up with less and less vision. And I was like, 
scared at that time. And I thought, no, tomorrow's going to be fine. I'm going to get my eyesight back. But it was getting less and less. And that's when I realized I need help. I'm losing my vision. And so I went straight to the optometrist and I said, can you check if I need glasses because I, I can't see well anymore? And they said, you need to go to an ophthalmologist today. And I said, what's wrong? And they said, we think you're going blind. We think your retina is detaching. And I was just, Connor, my heart just sank. And I thought, how is this possible? And so I went to the ophthalmologist. I did a whole bunch of tests. And they said, we can't explain it. We're sending you for an MRI scan. Maybe you are, um, maybe there's a disease forming in my body. And I thought, whoa, whoa, whoa. So then I, here I am getting my brain scanned in an MRI and just thinking, what is happening here? And the brain scan came back all clear. And then doctors couldn't explain it. I went to neurologists, you know, I spent thousands and thousands of dollars on appointments. And I said, you know what? I'm going Eastern philosophy. So I went to my acupuncturist. I went to my iridologist. I went to my naturopath, my chiropractor, my massage therapist. So I started doing all the things. I spoke to my spiritual teachers and my spiritual teacher, the first thing she said was, Helen, it's your eyes. And I said, yes. And she said, what aren't you seeing clearly right now? And I just sort of sat there and I was like, oh my gosh, I just, you know, made this decision on a new business venture, like two new decisions. So I put a stop to both of them straight away. Mm. And then I started meditating, you know, with my mantra and doing all the things every day to get myself well. And then I also decided to go and speak to my dentist. (laughs) And I said to him, these are my symptoms. Have you heard of this before? And he sent me a picture and he said, is this what you're all seeing through your eyes? And I said, yes. And then he said, I think you have a very bad case of TMJ. And I was like, what? And so I went to his practice and he scanned my jaw straight away. And we noticed that my jaw there's two bo- bones, thermomandibular joint there. I, I was compressed there. My bones are stuck together. And he said, look, Helen, your jaw's already compressed. He said, if you're stressed and you're clenching your teeth at nighttime, all of your cranial nerves have to pass through that joint. He said, so I feel like you are compressing your optic nerve. And I thought, whoa, that makes sense to me. And so he made me this special, I don't know, splint mouth guard thing. And Connor, it was so bizarre. As I would wake up with this new splint, I would feel like a squirting, squirting across my brain. And I messaged him and I said, is it possible that an optic nerve (laughs) might open and blood can squirt through? And he said, well, yes. And then what happened, Connor? It was just like a miracle. My eyesight started coming back more and more. So I had changed my career. (laughs) I had started looking after myself well. And I got rid of a lot of the things that were stressing me. My eyesight started coming back. And then I thought, because this had gone on for quite a few months, I wonder if I'm going to have permanent eye damage. And so anytime a light would shine in front of me or turn off in front of me, my eyes would flash with like a fluoro orange or like a fluoro blue. And I thought, okay, this is the the permanent damage that I've sustained because I had nerve damage. And every time there's a different, you know, shade of light, I'm just going to have to deal with this. And then Connor, I thought, no. I'm not happy with that either. I want to see clearly with both eyes when it's dark or light. So I kept going on with my practice. And guess what, Connor? 
You're so it perfect. doesn't happen anymore. Yeah. Everything is perfect. So every day I wake up and I say, I am grateful for my eyes. I am grateful for my ears. I am grateful for my nose, my mouth, my senses. Because it's only when you lose one corner that you realize how lucky you really are. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this is nowhere near what you went through, okay? I'm not comparing this in any way, shape or form. But back in May, I had laser eye surgery and oh. so I could, you know, see better and not have glasses. And during that procedure, which only takes 40 seconds for each eye, three seconds in, you, you go blind. So for those three seconds, I was like, whoa. Like, you know, the heart does go a bit. Luckily enough, it's only three seconds, so you then get back to normality. But I remember, yeah. you know, the day after thinking, wow, I'm so lucky, A, to have some kind of eyesight, and B, now to have very good eyesight where I don't need glasses. And I see the world differently. It's like a superpower. So I do have some, and I'm not comparing, as I said, but I have some understanding of what you mentioned there. That's so interesting. And, you know, before I... <laughs> couldn't see I would always just I am weird I would when I'd get home at night time I would close my eyes and you know there's two sets of stairs that I have to go up to come to my bedroom and I would try to get to my bedroom every night with my eyes closed because I was like I wonder how blind people do this and so I'd use my hands and it was so funny because when I did lose my eyesight I was okay because I'd practiced right for, for years how to walk with my eyes closed so it was so interesting that I used to do that and it came in handy it's just bizarre and so with that what key lessons or key techniques do you advise to your clients based on what you've gone through healing so releasing any negative emotions that you're holding on to or any negative thought patterns or internal dialogue that you are repeating to yourself and stress. That is the first step, becoming fully aware of what it is that you are thinking every single day and making sure that they're healthy thoughts and healthy patterns. And if not, then just start working on that, okay? And once you've got that down pat, you know, there's a whole bunch of self-care rituals and routines that I task my clients and things that I do. But you know how I mentioned stress and stuff. I had to change my friendship circles. You know, there was definitely some people in my life that weren't serving a purpose for me anymore, a healthy purpose, I should say. And there was definitely decisions that I was making that weren't also serving my purpose. It, it can be a little bit difficult if you sort of don't know who you are. And it's really important to work on your identity and who you are and who you're becoming. And just making sure that your whole life is supporting that. And if there's something in your life that isn't supporting that, just to be mindful of it and how much energy you're putting into that, whether it's a person or a thing or whatever it is. Right, I see. And how have you made the transition from your coaching practice in physical form to online with this lockdown corona situation? How has that <laughs> transition been for you? Very, very easy. I suppose it's also about attitude. And, you know, a lot of people, the first thing that happens when uh, something like coronavirus happens, a lockdown or some sort of uncertainty, is people love to fall into bad habits and excuses. And so right before the lockdown, I was already prepared because, you know, there's always signs that this is going to happen. So I had prepared everyone and pivoted my business before the lockdown and prepared everybody. All right, listen, remember what happened with the first lockdown. Don't use the second lockdown as an excuse. Be the person that you want to be. And, you know, all of that sort of stuff. So my clients, they sort of already knew what was coming. You know, the hardest thing would be for people and fitness and fear. People 
don't want to go outside sometimes here, Connor, because they're too scared that they might catch a virus. We're allowed to exercise here in Sydney. I don't know if you are, but we're allowed to go out for an hour and exercise. And for a lot of people, I offer online stuff. And if I don't see anyone for a while or hear from any of my clients for a while, I always get on the phone and make sure that they're okay. The shift for me has been easy, I suppose, because I'm sort of obsessed with wellness and health and making sure that my clients are happy. And I suppose that's why I, I thrive with what I do, because it really means a lot to me if anyone that is associated with me is living their best life. And if they're not, I feel the hurt. <laughs> so then I feel like I'm not doing my job properly. I'll always find a way, Connor, to pivot in any sort of uncertainty mm. uh, and make it positive. I, I, it's all about your attitude, Connor, and, and how you're focusing your energy and all of that sort of stuff. Yeah, and with that, if there was somebody out there considering coaching and is looking to work with you, what should they expect from coming to work with you? <laughs> they should expect support. Someone that will truly understand them. I find a lot of people don't feel safe in the world or with other people and don't know how to communicate well and may feel judged. When people come to work with me, I always just have a very casual chat as the first session so that we can sort of get to know each other and feel each other out. And then I can sort of get a person based on that conversation. And I love the people that come to me that have tried, you know, therapy, psychologists and every other therapy possible and they haven't received results. I love when they come to me because one, I know that they really want help and they really want to change. And two, I, I love facilitating change in people. And my process is quite quick. I don't like my clients staying in like a coaching program too long. I rather them just get well, get well fast learn how to live their best life and learn how to achieve their goals, learn how to release anything that's holding them back, whether it's trauma or mindset stuff or an identity crisis for any of the teenagers that I work with. Um, I like working really fast. So yeah, life is too short kind of to sit there and suffer. So people can expect results basically and fast results when they come to me. All I ask them of them, Connor, is that they actually want the change and they are 100% willing to play full out in the period that we're together. If they can do that, then the world is their oyster. Excellent. And Yeah, there's been a few clients that weren't willing to play at 100% and I said, look, you'll have to come back when you're ready. Because then what happens, Connor, is they won't make the change that they want. And then they'll say, I've tried everything and nothing works. It's really important to know when you're a coach as well, you know, which clients to take on and which ones just still need a bit more time. How important do you think the concept of taking responsibility is? Taking 100% responsibility for your situation? where often it might not be your fault that a certain thing has happened to you, but it's your responsibility how you deal with it. How important do you think that is in your work? It's actually the most important. When clients come to me, it's because they're out of rapport with their unconscious mind at that time. So they believe that they don't have the answers. My job is to make them come back into rapport with their unconscious mind and their subconscious so that they realize that, hold on, 
I am the master of my own life. I create my destiny. I create my fate. Responsibility is 100% important. And I'm an NLP coach. We work with cause and effect. If people are in effect of their problem and they're blaming everybody else, then my job is to get them at cause so that they can take some accountability and responsibility for the part that they played in any situation not saying that they deserved to suffer, not saying that they're at fault, but just to understand that there was a role played in that and to take responsibility for that so that you can start seeing life from a different lens instead of a lens of blaming everyone else for your situation because you can never grow when you're in that sort of mindset. Absolutely. And with that, what sort of things are you looking to achieve in the near future? Where would you like to go from here? I am in the middle of writing my next book. So funny. It's like I have two books in the pipeline because as I was writing this one, a new one came to my head and (laughs) so I want to get those out and ready I also want to just keep inspiring and maybe collaborating with other people in the health and wellness realm so that we can manifest you know some beautiful change and ripple some goodness out into the world I just want to keep inspiring one human at a time until I can make an impact on millions of people around the world, just so that people can feel certain, absolutely certain that they can achieve their goals and live life peacefully and happily. That's where I'm moving towards. Have you got any resources that you could share with the audience? For example, books, podcasts, videos, any resources that have helped you or that you would recommend in taking the path of self-improvement? Holy Lord. (laughs) So (laughs) many. Hold on. (laughs) Oh, my gosh. I, (laughs) it's so funny. I have read a ton of books. I listen to so many podcasts and now that you just said this to me, five million different things are coming to mind. <laughs> Number one, there is a book and it's called The Four Agreements. I think this is really important for everyone to read in life. Have you read it? I have, yeah. It's one of my favourites. Yeah, I think that's very, very important uh, when it comes to self-discovery and stuff because a lot of people assume things a lot of people take things personally a lot of people aren't you know impeccable with their word and so this book shows you uh, a lot about how to become a less judgmental peaceful calm in control person so that would probably be my first resource Uh, there is so many things And it just depends where you want to go. You know, if you need help with rituals and uh, procrastination, you know, there's things like The Miracle Morning by Hal Elrod. Uh, If you are entrepreneurial, you know, and you want to work on that side of things, Gary Vaynerchuk, he's got some great books. If you, it's money that you want to make and wealth, there's so many beautiful investment books um, that you can read. Another book, God, you've started me on a tangent, but that really helped my self-discovery was this book called You Can't Hurt Me, Can't Hurt Me by David Goggins. Oh, yes. Um, It it was just so inspiring to see that, you know what, we all have problems. (laughs) We all go through things and it's so important to use your life experiences for good rather than for negativity and that's a really great book for that i was lucky enough to meet david goggins he's one of my idols uh, we worked in a, at 
an event together, which was so amazing. I was totally fangirling. Yeah. With your physical health, there's this book from the medical medium, and he talks about a whole bunch of foods that you should be eating for your body. Start with your why by Simon Sinek, because you should always connect to your why. I mean, I can just keep going, Connor. There's so many amazing resources that have helped me, but definitely reading is one of my favorites. Yeah. And with that, sorry to say, what was it like meeting David Goggins? I say this as a huge Goggins fan as well, so I'm slightly fan. as I hear. <laughs> so my friend in Australia, Sam McCall, he runs a annual seminar called Upgrade Your Life. And I was helping out with um, the morning yoga, the hosting on stage, and David Goggins was one of the speakers. And so was Jim Quick. I got to meet Jim Quick as well, but it was David Goggins that had me, you know. Um, he's so tall, Connor, first off. Oh, really? So he's like this, yes. I was like, wow, like he's larger than life. And what we did for that event is the VIPs got to do a workout with David Goggins. Now listen to this, Connor. <laughs> so <laughs> his workout was insane i think we had to star jump for about 10 minutes straight when you read his story the things that he says that he does he actually does you know everyone's <laughs> calves were absolutely burning and he was just like one two three four and he just wouldn't stop and then there was like another five or ten minutes worth of lunges and then there was, there was just so much stuff. And I was just like, this guy is insane. Like, it's unbelievable. But you can see what he means by stay hard because he has sharpened his mind so much because when he gets to that point of uncomfortability or the edge, it, it like turns him on yeah. and it makes him just want to keep going to see what will happen how much better can he get what more can he achieve so yeah he was so inspiring I'm a massage therapist as well so I was doing some massage therapy on the speakers that were there however my friend was David Goggins massage therapist uh were you <laughs> yeah nice when you read his book and he runs a 100-mile race even though he's broken both of his shins. And when he finishes, he does an extra mile just to make sure he wasn't kidding or he wasn't quite <laughs> sure how he, how, he, how he says it. <laughs> the man doesn't feel pain. He mustn't, yeah. yeah even he with just found a way, yeah, to, to work with pain and transform pain into power, which is amazing. Yeah. Have you seen his clip on Joe Rogan? I think the guy is called Jesse Itza, who hired Goggins to train him for a month. Oh my gosh. <laughs> what happened to him? Stories at 5am where he's in bed with his wife and he just <laughs> gets a tap on the shoulder from Goggins saying, OK, time to go. <laughs> yes, actually, yes. And um, his girlfriend was there and I was like, this is real, isn't it? And she's like, oh, yeah, this is just him. <laughs> Because, you know, what he was doing didn't surprise her at all. And I was like, does he sweat? Like, does he? And what was amazing, Connor, is he needed a yoga mat and he used mine, right? And he sweat up a storm. To this day, I haven't washed it. I'm not. And I was like, I'm going to keep this sweat and hopefully I'm going to have your energy every time I use my yoga mat. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> The guy now is extraordinary. I always wonder what would it like be like to live with Goggins because, yeah, as you said, it's not just a gimmick. It's not an act. That is, Goggins is Goggins. I, I can't imagine him switching off. Like, what does he do for fun? Uh, a two-hour run or two hours of yoga? <laughs> What's his life? She, she did actually say, yeah, they get up and they go for a run. Yeah. Um, but they just seem so chill, you know, like just so chill. It was really humbling, like very down to earth. So you could easily have a conversation with him. Yeah, no, that'd be fascinating. And hopefully I do one day. Uh, before we wrap things up, Helen, um, 
where can we find out more about what you do online or on social media? Oh, definitely follow my Instagram account, which is Whole Health. That's the name of my business, uh, Holistic Health, um, H-O-L underscore health. And then I've also got the website, which is wholehealth.com.au, H-O-L health. Yeah. Sounds great. Well, uh, Helen, thank you very much for your time today. It's hugely appreciated and all the very best with your future projects. Awesome. Thanks for your time today, Connor. It's been such a great chat. Yeah, massively. The time's just flown by. Right. Time flies when you're in lockdown. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's how the phrase goes. <laughs> All right, love. I'll talk to you soon. Take care. Thank you, Times Infinity, for spending time with me. It really means a lot. Putting yourself first will really help escalate your goals your dreams and I love being on the journey with you so make sure you come and tell me on my Instagram at whole health which is h-o-l underscore health and comment below this podcast photo to share your thoughts on my show today and if you enjoyed it please leave me a five-star review on iTunes or Spotify so that I can keep bringing amazing value to you I'm sending you truckloads of love power and joy. Bye for now.